Okay, here we're going to talk about the medial longitudinal fasciculus, okay? This allows communication between the left and right eye when a person looks, let's say, to the left. Let's say a person looks to the left. So the lateral rectus on the left is going to need to contract, and the medial rectus on, on the right eye is going to need to contract. The problem is the lateral rectus is innervated by cranial nerve 6, whereas the medial rectus is innervated by cranial nerve 3. So how does that work? That's where the medial longitudinal fasciculus comes in. This allows communication between the two, the, the oculomotor and the abducens nucleus. The medial longitudinal fasciculus is right here in purple. Okay, so what happens is, let's say a person decides he wants to look to the left. So the motor cortex sends a signal to here, to the blue area, first to the PPRF, the paramedian pontine reticular formation, which sends a signal to the abducens. This green dot over here is the abducens in the pons. And so one signal goes directly to the lateral rectus on that side. On the, on the lateral rectus on the left side is going to contract. And what happens is that there's another signal sent to the oculomotor nucleus. You see that pink area is the oculomotor nucleus right here. Okay, that's another signal that's sent from the abducens. And it goes to the right medial rectus. And so what happens is, at the very same time, the lateral rectus on the left and the medial rectus on the right can contract. That is the medial longitudinal fasciculus. In internuclear ophthalmoplegia, that's associated with strokes and multiple sclerosis, so what happens is that there's going to be a problem with the MLF. So here's the MLF in purple, and then let's say that gets cut off. So now there's going to be no communication between the green, which is the abducens, and the pink, the oculomotor. So now let's say, a person wanted to look to the left. So a signal is going to be sent to the abducens over here, and the left eye is going to be able to turn to the left. Since this purple line connecting the two, the oculomotor and the abducens, is cut off, no signal is going to be sent to the oculomotor nerve, and thus the medial rectus on the right is not going to contract. Only the lateral rectus is going to contract, and therefore the left eye is going to look to the left, whereas the right eye is not going to move at all. So that's what happens in internuclear ophthalmoplegia. Now, just a few other associations in this disease. Well, as we mentioned, it's associated with multiple sclerosis and strokes. And it's important to know that the actually the, uh, the convergence is not going to be affected. So let's say a person wanted to look, let's say this arrow, you want to look towards the middle. So both eyes would converge towards the middle. Because in that scenario, the cortex would send signal directly to the nerve in the medial rectus. So go straight to the oculomotor, it won't need to pass through the abducens. So you don't need communication between the two nuclei. Another association is that in internuclear ophthalmoplegia, the lateral rectus, when it looks to the left and the medial rectus is left alone, there's going to be an nystagmus because it, since only the left eye is going to be moving to the left, it's going to sort of be confused because the right eye is not moving, so it's like, do I continue looking to the left or do I go back? And that leads to the nystagmus. All right, so that's basically it for um, internuclear ophthalmoplegia. Thanks for watching.